Hello YouTube, Missouri Prepper 299 here. Today we're going to take a look at reloading military 556 cases. Hope you enjoy the video. The first step in getting the 556 cases ready, at least for me, the way I do things, is with a Lyman Universal Decapper, I just punch out all the primers. And I'm just going to do five here real quick. So we have a baseline to work with. It's pretty simple. Press it down. And as you can see, takes out uh, the primer, leaves the crimp in there. I'm not doing any resizing with a dirty case or messing up my dies. So we'll just do a couple more of these here and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, now that we have the cases deprimed and we've got them cleaned, we're going to go ahead and set them on the Dillon Super Suede 600, set them on the support rod, fold it down in the cradle, simply depress the lever, and what you get is nicely rounded out and chamfered primer pocket, as opposed to one of the earlier ones. Let's see if we can get it to focus there. See it still has the crimp on it. Well, we're going to go ahead and solve that right now. Yep, really I'm kind of liking this. It does make life a lot nicer. It's a lot better than me having to sit there and cut out the pockets. Pushes all the brass right back in place. And uh, just makes life a lot simpler. Let's go ahead and do just a couple more real quick and move on to the next step. I've seen a few videos out there on how to uh, automate this with a couple of springs. One I got a big kick out of watching the spring flip the case up out of its cradle and off into a bag. That was kind of cool. I'm just going to keep mine all manual. told I guess you can do about 600 rounds in an hour with one of these. It's a lot quicker than what I was having to do with cutting out the old uh, primer pocket crimp. And there we have it. Everything's all decrimped. On to the next step. The next step we have to do is we need to size all of our cases to the right length. According to the book they should be at about 1.750. Uh, using this little lathe, little hand lathe, I'm going to go ahead and grind these down, or cut them down. That one actually appeared to be pretty good. Let's set that one off to the side. Let's find another one here really quick. Set her in, lock her in place, and it'll just cut the case all the way down to length. And you can feel it kind of drag a little bit until it reaches the end of its cut, and it's just very smooth sometimes I like to stick. And you can probably see uh, some of the burrs on there. And we want to get rid of the burrs as well. So we can take a hand tool, give it a few twists on the inside, get rid of the inside burrs, do it on the outside like that. And we have a nice clean case that's been sized and deburred. Let's, uh, let's do another one here. I'm going to use a tool I just recently got. Right. Cut that down to length. And another little Hornaday tool I got. This little power deburring tool. It even has a little attachment up here to clean the primer pocket. So in there like that. Same thing for the inside. And when you get all done, all your burrs are gone. Let's do another one. And 
and you might even be able to hear that kind of chattering as it's cutting it down. Once it sounds all smooth, it is. It doesn't take a whole lot of force on these at all, on either the hand tool or the power tool. Usually a couple twists is about all it's going to take to get that off of there. Okay, on to the next step. Once I get the cases cut, I generally check with micrometers. And as you can see, they're measuring about 1.750. Let's see if we can give you a reading on that a little bit easier. 1.750, right on the money. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and reprime these. I'll be using uh, CCI number 41 primers that are specifically designed for use in 5.56 millimeter ammunition. The advantage to using these instead of the small rifle primers is that they have a little bit harder cup on them. Uh, they don't tend to run into as many issues from what I've heard, although I've never had it happen to myself, but why take the chance? From what I've heard is the small rifle primers have a tendency to slam fire because the firing pin on the 5.56 rifles, the M4s, ARs and that, are all free floating. Okay, I'll just be using a hand primer to load the primers in here. There are a lot of other ways and many more automated and fast ways to do that, but I still like to have the feel of actually seeing how that primer is fitting into the pocket itself. We'll just take, we've already got a primer in there, take and set this in the trough, give it a squeeze, should fit in there real easily, shouldn't meet with any resistance whatsoever. And as you can see, we now have a primer properly placed. Now we're going to go ahead and load up 24.2 grains of BLC2 powder. I like this powder because it meters out really well. It seems to be very accurate. Uh, with the 62 grain bullet and 24.2 grains, I should be running at just around 2800 feet per second, which for my rifle seems to be pretty darn accurate. So we'll just go ahead and we'll load up about five of these. Okay, for the final step, which is basically seeding and crimping the bullet, I'm going to go ahead and use my progressive press simply because it goes a little bit faster. I've already got my die set up. It's set to both seat the bullet and to crimp it. And we'll just set that on up in there. Press the lever down. Go to our second bullet. Come down. And on and on and on. This is one of the advantages of the progressive press is I'm able to rock out quite a few loads here pretty quickly. In this particular case, I like doing it this way. And we'll do just a couple more here. Now my particular uh, die has got a uh, deal on it to where basically it will align the bullet as it goes up in so I don't have to really worry too much about it because it will set the bullet exactly where it needs to go. And that will give you some idea. Oops, dropped one. Let's grab that real quick and take a look at it. Alright, as you can see You've got a crimp on there. Yeah. Everything's seated just right, and we're ready to rock. A couple thousand more, and we're ready to go.